And hello and welcome to the Kalang Squash Center. Uh, I'm Mohit Lalwani and joining me is in this I, one of the stalwarts of the Tanglin Club. Uh, and we're going to enjoy his insights here. We've got two finals for you. The women's first and followed by the men's genie. Him and Wyon Ao Young, number one seed. While she is the favorite, genie's been a bit of a giant killer coming into this final. She's knocked out a number of seats, uh, Satyan. So, you know, we we're watching them warm up. We know she's got her work cut out for her, but I think she, yesterday in the semi final, she just looked extremely steady. And if she can keep that going and keep Wyan pinned to the back wall without allowing her to pick the ball early in the air, we just could have an interesting game on our hands. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone, and uh, Moy, thank you very much for having me. Uh, really excited and looking forward to a couple of uh, very good matches. Uh, well, I think will be a cracker. Uh, I think you're spot on in uh, in your observation. I think you're spot on in your observation, uh, whereby you talked a little bit about uh, Jeannie's game plan. I think she does have to uh, control the tee and uh, control the rallies, keep Yin at the back of the court, and uh, really see how she can develop the rallies to be then play her natural game and her natural shots that uh, can, she can form the winners from. All right, so it's time. Players will get a quick drink before they go back onto court. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think Wayne's going to bring, oh, it's really interesting. Wayne's going to bring a lot of experience. Uh, she's been, uh, you know, probably the number one Singapore national player for quite some time. She's been training in Bristol at one of the best academies, uh, Mohammed Al Shabagi Academy. Uh, training very hard there uh, and prior to her moving to Bristol she was under Tim Arnold uh, one of the Malaysian national players as well so I think um, you know some of the game has developed a lot in recent times especially in the last uh, sort of three six nine months so looking forward to see how game shaped up and uh, how she looks to dictate the court all right time for us to get underway 
And it looks like Jeannie's won the toss, and she'll serve it up. All right, here we go. Lim Jeannie, very soft. Lim Jeannie of Malaysia in black to serve. Aoyong Wainlin of Singapore in blue to receive. Best of five games, level. Nice positive start there from Jeannie. One love. Nice couple of rallies, a uh, couple of nice length balls. They're really trying to find the length on this court as they warm up and settle into their rhythm. You know, uh, Satyan, one of the things that we saw uh, Jeannie do yesterday, she actually uh, beat the younger Aoyoung. Uh, she's played some really good line yesterday. You know, the ball was nicely controlled, staying away from the side wall. You know, was, was, uh, she was hitting some really nice lines. Yeah, that's, that's really a good part of setting up your uh, structure and your rally in your game, right? And if you watch just in the early points, she's re really hitting her lines well within three to four boards. Uh, good control hitting. Uh, and I think Yen's still trying to figure out her uh, length and um, rhythm at the moment. Speaking of which, there's a lovely little length with perfect weight that gives her a winner. Absolute gorgeous boast of the volley, backhand volley. Yeah, this is one aspect of her game that Wayne's been working on a lot, is really holding the tee position, working on volleying as much as she can and dictating the play from there. And that was a classic example where she took the volley early, playing the and A lot of pressure. That's clever. And now, three, four. Down. Nice length there. And now, and that shot had a bit of bite to it as well. You know, it caught it caught it caught Genie a bit flat-footed, getting Five, three, yeah, getting there. You know, I think the different weights that uh, the player players hit these days, with different pace, uh, different depth, really uh, pushes the ball into the corners, and it's uh, quite an interesting shot. So she really took that drive, drive Genie into the corner, whereby even if she does get it, it's going to be a loose post that she can put away thereafter. So. Um, you know, the, the weights, different weights, different lines of the balls that they're hitting is, uh, is interesting. Oh, that's a loose ball. Probably could have no. caught a lap there, would have been a stroke. And now, six, four. Why are you now really getting into her rhythm and starting to control the game a little bit more? Stroke Get the lead. stroke. A little bit fortunate there where she did play a nice length, just managed to dig out the boast and it hit the nick and kicked up. Down. 
Yeah, that's exactly what we just discussed earlier in the last few points, right? Putting in a nice length, getting hit a go into the deep corners, and uh, just not able to get the ball out. Nice width on the cross court there. I think the other thing we need to see from Jeannie is, and she's not finding her length yet, Satya, and what's happening is a lot of the balls are falling just like this short. Wyan's able to pick them off before they come off the back wall, and that takes away a lot of time from Jeannie, just not putting Wyan under the kind of pressure. Yeah, and no, I agree with you, and, uh, you know, she's hitting uh, a little bit loose and a little bit short, uh, which is allowing Wyan to really dictate play. There's a classic example where she was short in her length and then playing the cross court, which had no width, and Wayne's able to pick and it off. Six, game four. So four game, game balls for the first game to the number one seed. She needs just one. 11, six, game two, all yours. All yours needs one game single. You know, interesting summary of the first game where both ladies did take a little bit of time to find some rhythm and a bit of momentum. I think Jeannie came out of the blocks a little bit faster, but then Wyan settled into her rhythm and routine, hitting good lengths, good depth, uh, and really controlling the tee, putting a lot of pressure on Jeannie, taking the ball to the front. And when she had an opportunity, she put the ball into the back corners. And even if Jeannie was able to dig it out, she had an easy ball to put away from the boast. So that's the one thing I'd like to see change you know, if I was sitting in Jeannie's co corner, what I'd like, what, what I'd tell her to do is see if she can pin Wyan deeper, if that's at all possible. You know, there's a lot of pressure that comes from Wyan, but she's got to be able to return that kind of pressure. She's got to be able to counter attack and al almost convert those into more dominant positions. Yeah, I think that comes with volleying a little bit more as well. And I agree, she's yeah. just not able to put that pressure on uh, Wyan just yet. Where if she's able to step up onto the tee, take the ball earlier, and keep taking uh, Yin to the back of the court um, and then play her, play her short games. And she does have a good uh, cross-court kill, uh, which will give it an opportunity to use that a lot more. Sorry for the viewers out there. I've been told I need to speak a little bit louder. Speaking loud has never been a challenge for me. All right. Wyan gets the second game underway. It's a great defensive lob. Oh, that's just beautifully played. She made her do she made her do diagonals out there. Absolutely. And then got the loose ball where she put away quite easily. There's a lot of fine lines in squash, and uh, you know, just Jeannie just missing her length a little bit or uh, a little bit short, and uh, just allows Wayne to attack. And so you know, one of the things, Sathya, and it's, it's, it's basic, but I think it comes uh, as you grow much older more than anything else. Generally, when that's happening to you, it's there's a simple solution just open the face a bit more. You know, that's really what it takes. And perhaps she just needs to reset a bit and just find that open face a bit more because the ball will then travel to the back of the court. Yeah, even if it means uh, slowing down the pace a little bit and, like you said, open the face, uh, hit the ball a little bit higher up on the front wall uh, so the ball is able to get to the back. It gives her a bit more time as well uh, instead of rushing. And you can actually see at contact, the racket, the racket head isn't actually fully open now. Yeah. yeah, it is a little bit flatter. I think she likes to play the fast-paced game, but 
Uh, giving her way in short balls means uh, anything short is going to be an attacking ball coming straight back at you. Another nice volley from Wayan. And she continues to volley her game. This is one of the areas that she's been working a lot on with Tim Arnold and developing that so she's able to keep the pressure on her opponents through controlled volleying. And now, one five. And Jeannie does have a nice drop shot, so when she does get an opportunity, she is able to take the ball in short, or has a nice cross court, which uh, she can use as one of her weapons. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, that doesn't look very nice. Yeah, just with that cross court width, she just started hobbling. Seems to be okay now, but she did pull up a little bit funny. It was just so much better. The length was much better than it was before. I'm not sure what happened to her rally before where she just pulled up a little bit funny there. I'm not sure if she's done something, but that actually enabled her to uh, change her rally st style a little bit but she was a bit more patient rallying, uh, slowing the pace down. Um, so perhaps that's a sign of how she may want to play the game. Nice loose ball that she's just covered and a nice cross court, which we just discussed earlier. Nice put away. Four, six. Five love down, four, six. It's a nice comeback. Yeah, a mini game comeback, but why in another aggress aggressive boast to uh, continue with the lead? And she's used the boast, especially on the backhand, and this time on the forehand, really well in this game. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't want to be chasing those boasts. Yep. Unless it's on a double score, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeannie does seem to be in some discomfort there. She's hobbling a little bit. I'm just wondering if she's got a tight back or uh, something like that where she's unable to quite take that big lunge into the forward corners to pick up some of the drop shots. A few unforced errors coming up here and giving Wai Yin a big lead. Oh. It's a glute, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-oh. That's never good, especially if it runs down to the hamstring. Oh. You know, I don't know if you've ever experienced it, uh, Satyan, but, you know, a hamstring injury is one of the most difficult to come back from. You know, you always think it's healed, and it really hasn't ever. And, you know, it's, it's, it feels fine way before it's actually healed, and it's just such a terrible injury to work with. Yeah, you're spot on, Moit. You know, uh, you know, hamstrings are very tough. You know, after you've done a hamstring injury, after a week or 10 days later, you actually feel you're fine and ready to go. Whereas the reality is it's still healing inside and you're probably another two or three weeks away from realistically coming back. So that's a common uh, challenge for most players where they think they're ready, but they're not. And they come back too early and they end up re-injuring the same hamstring again. Or they start, the other option issue that, or the challenge they have is they start compensating for that hamstring and they therefore uh, another part of their uh, body breaks down, like a groin or a, uh, or a hip, etc. So, you know, that certainly is an interesting yeah, point. And yeah. rehab is an important part. And um, in this day and age, a lot of the professionals are uh, got great support. And uh, stretching is another one. You know, I, for one, certainly could stretch a lot more. And, the, you know, I was just watching Yin and Jeannie both warm up before the match. And, you know, they were warming up for a good half an hour. And some of their warm-ups felt like a, an intense workout. Um, so that's how much uh, they put into their bodies to look after it and make sure they can prepare match after match. All right, so Wine in complete control right now, going into game three. She's two games to love up for those just joining us. Jeannie came off the court with a bit of a 
of a strain down her glute. She, she's going to try and stretch that out. Yeah, it's a shame because I was enjoying this. I'm st really enjoying this game because there are some battle within battles as well, right? a ball she could have taken straight as she lunged into it instead end up playing a boast into the tin so they're the little game uh, games within games or battles within battles that I was referring to earlier where well, that's a good ball that she could have just taken straight and kept the rally uh, and try and structure it and settle it a little bit more oh. as Wayne hits a ball out and uh, Ginny takes another point and now one ball Nice little trickle boast at the front to give another point. So she is actually quite good at the front. With nice drop shots, nice flick kills, uh, trickle boasts. So I think she's got plenty of arsenal. Uh, just being able to create the opportunity where she can use her uh, shots to her peril. And all of a sudden she's come storming back into this game. She's never going to win that. She's got to be. She's just got to put a lot more pressure, and she had the opportunity because she had set it up with a nice. Yeah, and then it was a loose drop that uh, just got allowed Wayne to get there and play it straight down the line, and especially with uh, Ginny's mobility being an issue at the moment, but she still seems to be grabbing her lower back. Yeah, lovely straight ball down the line. And now, ball three. Now, just think, thinking that, I think this little niggly uh, niggle that she's picked up is actually making her, or forcing her to play a little bit differently. And she's actually playing some good shots, but occasionally she gets caught out now. like now, and then she's in grimace for a period of time, for a few rallies. But she's in the game at 4 all. Shot. That's a lovely shot. That's exactly what I was talking for two rallies earlier, where she had the same ball. This time she played it straight and was a winner. And last time she tried to play a boast out of it, which ended up hitting the tin. So. Nice little finish there by Jeannie. Followed by a deep primal cry. She was happy with that. I think she's uh, working incredibly hard to uh, try and figure out a way to win this third. Yes, let. It's probably a fair call on a yes let there. There was interference, albeit minimal. She did take a swing. I think she hit her on the back swing. So a pretty good call Five, there. Four. I think the other thing, Moet, is also uh, all the women's and the men's squash over the last sort of 10 days or two weeks has been a lot of squash. And they just have not had the time to prepare and get their body conditioning for tournament squash. And uh, I think this is the reason why uh, some of the players are feeling incredibly tight in their bodies, their arms, their legs, their back. Um, and, you know, maybe Jeannie is also feeding some of that num num number of matches over a short period of time. Oh, that's a fantastic straight drive. And now, six all. And she's staying in it, you know, despite the pain, despite the challenges from a potential injury, she's staying in it. Actually, it's like I said, I think it's allowed her to focus a little bit more, and uh, she's even concentrating and harder, six. being a bit more disciplined. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if she takes this third. And for the purposes of our viewers and... Uh, us commentating as well. It'd be great if she takes a third. Uh, 
That's just an experienced volley drop into the neck winner. I think the second boast is what, you know. Yeah, you're right. I mean, typically, you know, rally, you're setting it up for yourself, right? The first time, second time, third time, really moving your opponent around the court. And it's the third or fourth or fifth time when you get the opening. Uh, the 80-20 ball, that's the one you want to put away, not uh, take the go in too early to try and finish off a rally. Wayne's picked up that Jeannie's not moving too well, so now she's just throwing into the uh, throwing a lot of bows and drops, and has uh, rushed into a 8-5 lead. That should have been a straight drop and most likely would have been a winner instead. Oh, well, she's won the point regardless. Uh, she keeps fighting. And with that, she's got two game balls. And game ball. Nice dig out of the volley. Oh, if she was there, it was almost a strike there for her. Yeah, Just right. end up going the wrong it up way. and she gets the stroke. Oh, she's hurting even more so now. Needing one more point for the game. Opportunity. Oh, great defensive lob. A very experienced way in. Shot and a fantastic finish. And a nice little scream at the spirit, end. don't you? Absolutely. Never give up attitude. And she's hurting, you can tell. But she's uh, hanging in there and giving it all she's got. And we have a match on. As the players take a short break and coming back in 15 seconds, there's a call from the referee. It's interesting, Wai Yin taking a two-love lead, thinking she's going to cruise through. Um, and with Jeannie, even while she's obviously impaired a little bit from some sort of a niggle or an injury, uh, she's fighting. And it's actually made her change her game a little bit, whereby she's able to hit better balls, uh, slow the pace down a little bit, a bit more controlled hitting. And it's actually helped her uh, where she's actually been able to play some of the winners that she has the strengths to be able to play. So uh, here we are. I think Wayan definitely knows that uh, Jeannie's hurting. So this will be an interesting game. Wayan must be a little bit nervous with uh, dropping that third. What do you think, Mohit? What's, gonna, what's your outlook on the fourth coming up? Yes, I agree. I mean, but she, she's, she's so experienced that she shouldn't have a problem resetting, you know? But that's lovely. Look at that shot. She's got that Malaysian flair, isn't it? It's fantastic. I believe uh, Jeannie's a state player from Penang. So obviously uh, uh, from the Nicole David uh, part of the world. And um, certainly has that flair with the whole flicks and the nice little drop shots. and. Cross court kills. Just going in there with a the half swing, not really able to 
get the ball into even a post type situation. You're right, Moet. I mean, Yin is an experienced campaigner. She's represented Singapore for a number of years, having played uh, Asian Games, Sea Games, etc. So, certainly knows how to handle herself under pressure and is uh, coming through now. And she has raised a game as well. Yep, that's an easy stroke. Now, really looking to take control of the fourth and bring it home with a 5 1 lead. Lovely. Nice post again, using all the angles and all the size of the court. And I'm sure now for Jeannie, this singles court is looking like a doubles court playing singles on it. So much real estate. Eight one. Eight one and Jeannie's body language suggests that this one is over. But. That was yeah, a probably a good call there. Uh, still had a lot of real estate to cover to get to that ball, and uh, and then on top of that, do something with it. It's always going to be a no let. Nice straight drive again. And now two nine. You know, I think even despite um, going down fighting, there's some some really good positives there for Jeannie. I think. Um, and she came out with some good discipline. Uh, she certainly knows her uh, strengths and her shots. Something that she can continue to build it's a on. Lovely lob. And she's in control here again. There's that little flick. Gets away with that, but you know those. The, that uh, there are a few times in the game when if she can generate a bit of pace on those because she's sitting on top of those and just go either down the line or even with a nice sharp cross-court kill, she wins that point. Absolutely. I think there's not much between it. That's just Wayne's a bit more experienced and uh, training out of uh, where she is in Bristol uh, just has that added advantage. But apart from that, not much in it. And she's been a really enjoyable match to watch. And with that... Well played. There's a lot of president, a lot of a lot of positives out there for Jeannie as well, and well played by Ian. Congratulations on winning the uh, Open. All right, and next up is the men's finals. We'll take a break in the commentary, hear from our sponsors, and be back with the men's finals. Samuel Kang versus Aaron Liang. Losing muscle mass as we age has a profound impact on our quality of life. The bad news is that the gradual loss of muscle mass or sarcopenia can affect one in four Singaporeans above the age of 50. The good news is that you can take steps to slow down this process. Regular resistance exercise and a balanced diet with a good amount of protein will help strengthen and build muscle mass. Drink two glasses of Marigold HL Milk daily to get 20 grams of protein. Working out keeps your body in shape and proper refueling after a workout can promote muscle repair and growth. It ensures that your muscles get the nutrients they need to recover. It is important to consume the right food or beverage right after a workout as your body and muscles are most able to maximize recovery in the first 60 to 90 minutes. Two glasses of HL milk contain the essential supplements and nutrients to replenish your body. One in three women over the age of 50 will suffer a fracture due to osteoporosis. Bones become weak and brittle due to the loss of bone mass as we age. 
sufficient calcium and vitamin D intake will help build strong bones and enhance calcium absorption. Drink two glasses of Marigold HL milk for your daily calcium and vitamin D needs. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a warning. The good news is, you can lower your blood cholesterol by consuming at least 2 grams of plant sterols daily. Plant sterols block the absorption of bad cholesterol into your bloodstream. Marigold HL Milk contains plant sterols which have been proven to lower blood cholesterol.
ไAll right, and as we get ready for the men's final, these two met in the Nationals just about a week ago, less than a week ago. That was last Saturday. Um, Samuel won that 3-1, but Aaron does seem to be bridging that gap. Satyan Sam Samuel's absolutely dominated the last few years. It'll be interesting to see how this one gets on. Yeah, Moet, 100% agree with you. I think this is going to be a cracking match. Uh, like you said, they did meet four days ago, and uh, recovery, I'm sure, is very tough. And having to play back-to-back -back tournaments and back-to-back -back matches. Uh, Samuel is a, a pro, you know, a stalwart of Singapore squash. And the young gun, Aaron Liang, coming up through the ranks, now number two in Singapore. And he did push him. Uh, so obviously goes to show that he's bridging the gap um, every time they play each other. So really looking forward this, to this contest. It's interesting, Mo. I was speaking to Samuel uh, just before the game started, uh, just outside uh, while they were warming up, and he was just saying how uh, he's just recovering from a small niggly and just hasn't had the same time to uh, prepare and get, you know, match condition or tournament conditioned. So uh, you know, he's feeling, you know, back-to-back -back tournaments, back-to-back -back matches. He's really certainly feeling it, um, but certainly did come down early to make sure he gave himself every chance to loosen up, stretch, and be prepared for this game. And here we go. Having played each other just recently, I think they all both going to know each other's games really well. I think they're going to be, it's going to be a little bit like a routine for them where they train together, just having played recently together. I'm sure they'll know each other's shots inside out. Uh, and I think that'll cause for an interesting contest.
Lovely nick. Wow, and, and Aaron well intended. Just slots that into the nick. Another lovely finish from Aaron. Takes a volley drop into the nick. Just touched the outside line and uh, looks like Aaron's come out of the blocks uh, much fresher and uh, sharper. Samuel might take a half a game or so to just to get the body going. Just watching the early parts of the game uh, in the first here, uh, looks like Aaron's certainly come out with a lot of purpose and is backing himself to play some of his winning shots uh, like we've seen a couple already and uh, really driving uh, to his game plan that he's come out with. And that should be a stroke. Clever, well done. Lovely return of serve into the nick. So Aaron's put uh, three balls into the nick so far, so soon come out guns blazing. Oh, a fortunate nick at the back there. Samuel gets one of his nicks back as well, but perhaps not the same way he intended it to be. It's a lovely lob a with lovely great lob. length. Nice width there from Aaron. takes that volley, punishes it into the back corner Seven, four. for another winner. So with us, I watched the uh, final a few days ago and uh, the body language here from Aaron today is very different, or well, not very different, but certainly different to, uh, to today's and he's come out a lot more focused and determined and the self-belief that he can take this. I agree. It's completely different, and, he, and and when you see a rally like that, you know he's 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 crafting them a lot better than he was four or five days ago. Much much better, you know, with a lot more purpose, and 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 a better strategy than he was doing four days ago. Yeah, just the sharpness with and the accuracy with which he has taken the volley, drops into the corner into the nick, almost impossible to get, and even his length has been uh, very good. Where he's had driven Samuel uh, a couple of times. And so far, he's made his early two-point lead count. Yeah, Samuel sends him the wrong way, even though he managed to get to it. It's the next ball that he puts away.
It's interesting. Uh, we're beginning to see some of his uh, artillery here where he likes the volley into the nick from the forehand. We've seen a volley off the serve. Volley short on both sides. And he's also got that hold and flick on his backhand where he sends the opponent the wrong way. A flurry of sharp, short volleys on that occasion. Yeah, now just looking to settle the, down, the rallies down a bit. Make sure he consolidates that lead. He wants to make sure he wins that next point. There's a little hold flick on his backhand. Certainly the aggressor out here, Aaron. Yeah, he certainly is, and he's even playing through the interference. That's the third time he's done that this game, Hello. where he's played through, and it's actually paid dividends where he's rattled off a couple of these points. So certainly taking the uh, aggressive approach and attacking Samuel. of Aaron getting to that ball that yeah. caught Samuel a bit by surprise. Aaron on the cusp of taking the first here and uh, it's interesting because uh, this is exactly what Aaron's going to have to do to take down someone like a skunk who's a rock solid player, professional. He's not going to give you any easy points. You're going to have to work very hard for every single one of them and he's going to keep fighting and fighting and uh, over time he's going to test your game and to see if he can break you and that's what uh, Samuel does. Mini comeback here to 810. Opportunity. And, takes and he makes it. the most of it. It takes a first and with a fist pump. Game 11 to them. That leads one game to love. Certainly looking a lot more purposeful than he did four days ago, five days ago when he met Samuel. And looks like we've got a real super game on our hand, Satya. And that was some great squash that we saw, really quick reflexes, you know. Uh, really. Absolutely. Absolutely, some fast and furious uh, hitting going on there with some accuracy to go with it. So, uh, you know, I think um, the last match, uh, it's given Aaron a bit of sense of belief that. He can do this, you know, um, just walk, walking off the court and, and the, the way he walked onto the court for today's match. He's come with a sense of purpose. He's come focused with a bit of a game plan. Um, and he's executing it to a T. But don't be surprised as uh, what Skung's going to do, what he does best, right? He's going to keep wearing you down, breaking you down. And he's happy to take this game to five and then um, see how things pan out. So can the question's going to be is can Aaron keep this, the standard that he set and this high standard is executing to right now. So well, Mohit, what do you think is going through uh, Samuel's mind right now? He's lost the first, I mean, he beat him a few days ago. At that point, he was too little up, and he lost a third. So slightly turnaround in today's game. Um, Samuel's probably trying to figure out, OK, let, let me now work this way, my way back into the game. Uh, try and wear Aaron down and not give him so many opportunities so he can put the ball away. I think, well, like you said, you know, Aaron's playing really high quality of squash. I think if I was Samuel, I'd say, all right, look, I've got to just do what Samuel does and see how long Aaron can sustain it because there's always so much pressure on 
when you're playing against Samuel and can you sustain this? Can Aaron sustain this for three games or four games or five games for that matter, you know? Yeah. But with Aaron taking the first, you know, he can breathe a small sigh of relief to say, okay, I've got the first, so let's keep going. So uh, there's going to be a little more pressure on Samuel, but, you know, he never gives you any cheap points. I think in that whole game, uh, there was one boast that he put into the tin, and that's about it. The rest were all winners from Aaron, so uh, he's only going to step it up. Hi. So here we are for game number two. Actually, this game will define how the match pans out to a certain extent because if Aaron keep up the highest standard, he goes 2-0 up, or Samuel fights back, and uh, it's game on. So uh, really interesting how this game plays out in the context of the whole match. Oh, that's gorgeous. Putting Samuel under so much pressure with that short, sharp drop. You know, it was a drop that was traveling very wide. Unchar uncharacteristic oh. error there. But when you play in this uh, level of accuracy and hitting, uh, at, you are going to come up across some, some errors. So. I think the other thing that Aaron needs to keep doing is, if it's at all possible, easier said than done, but just to keep the score out of his head for now. Yeah, just take every point and play every point as it goes and uh, keep working his way towards it through, through every battle, right? It's a battle within a battle. Actually, one of the things I'm most impressed about Aaron's game today is his shot selections. They've actually been very, very, very good. Playing the right shot every time. Oops, with that, I just put the mockers on him by him flooring, uh, putting one into the tin, going for a nick off the volley. I'm not so sure that was the right shot selection either, <laughs> because Samuel was right up there in front. If it pops out... Yeah, I think I made that statement just at a point in time where he let me down, so hopefully I'll say it again a little bit later on, and uh, he justifies my statement. much you can do about that. attacking boast for a winner. It's a lovely lob. I've noticed one thing in this game, Samuel's making Aaron work much harder, you know, he's getting his line and length much tighter and he's just holding it ever so slightly and he's pushing Aaron much deeper than Aaron was being pushed in the first game. Yeah, and we knew Samuel would do that, right, because of the, the player that he is. And I think the other thing he's done is he's straightened up his game a little bit more, not as many cross courts as yep. uh, compared to the first game. So it's taken a lot of the angles away from Aaron to be able to shoot some of the winners that he was shooting. players trading Nick for Nick. Four, five. Oh, you gotta love youthful exuberance, don't you? Aaron pulls out the Mizuki. 
and to good effect, mind you. Well, that's uncharacteristic from Samuel. Well, the first game and a half certainly has been fast and furious and a very high tempo uh, game. So uh, I think at some point we will see change of tactics oh. and the potential to slow the game Five down a little bit. With the score at 5-4 to Aaron. Out of court. actually didn't need to do that. He had enough time to get back and have a proper swing at it and play a straight drive and said elects to play it off the back wall, which gives Samuel an opportunity to attack and put the ball away. So six all, game two. Aaron leads one game to love. But that's the second time he's gone to the back hole when I think he could have just stepped back, Seven, you know, just yeah. waited. The ball was always going to come back to him. Yeah, I think this is where experience comes in, right? Where uh, with a little bit of youthful exuberance, uh, he's certainly fast and quick enough. So there's no need to, the stroke. Uh, you know, go unnecessarily too aggressive, which just creates an opening for your opponent. And with that, he's given Samuel two points, you know, so really needs to just start focusing a bit more go back to what he was doing yeah he was up 2-0 and now Samuel's up 2-0 so a bit of a turnaround of 4 to 5 points that's lovely that's what he needs to be doing a lot more of easier said than done but you know he's got the ability to do it and it's 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 where he's hurting Samuel most of all yeah you know it's funny but uh, one of the shots that I one of the words sorry that I was uh, often emphasized on when I was coming through my earlier year, younger years in squash where uh, Shane Hagen will tell you this word he used to use the word options and basically what he's referring to there is picking the right shot selection the right option to play at the right point in time in the rally and the right point in time of the game in the context and uh, you know that's one word that's always stuck with me yep. uh, which is so true and uh, I think you kind of alluded to that where you know him playing the right ball right shot in the context of the rally in the context of the game uh, and so far his options actually have been very good. It, and he followed that up with a lovely, very soft boast as well, taking Sam by surprise. And again, it was when he played it and how he played it. This is a situation that Samuel thrives on, right? He knows yep. he's ahead. He's just going to keep punishing and making Aaron work and work and work. Wow, so, I mean, that's he's great, great quick reset. Isn't he? What I like about Aaron's game this evening is the way he's changing the tempo. Yeah, he's prepared to do the hustle. I mean, yeah. He's hustling, he's playing, hanging in there. I think it's almost like he's told himself that he really must win the next couple of points and keep himself in the game. Oh, he'll want that one back. Down to me. So 9-8. Nine, 9-8. Eight. Nine, eight. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. a correct call. Yes, Lad. Yeah. Still had some way to go, and um, there's just a bit of interference. I think Sam was hoping for a stroke, but that couldn't possibly be a stroke there. This is a really crucial point in the context of this game and the match as well. Nice length. Very nice length and lovely. Just the right amount of weight and pace on it as well. Interesting. That was a ball that Samuel should have taken and straight and said chooses to go four. cross court where Aaron's there and uh, puts a nice length ball where it dies in the corner. Nine all. Big point here. I think we'll just see Samuel extend the rallies from here onwards and just keep making Aaron work. It's a lovely line. Yeah. Nice pick up, but Aaron loses his balance and uh, Samuel puts a ball away, which should take him to a 10-9 game ball lead. I wonder if we will see um, Aaron go for a winner off the serve, or will he look to construct the rally and keep patience and, and try and figure out to get to 10 all? been working for Aaron but he gets away with it he tried that he's tried that three or four times already and got himself into a bit of trouble they've been heavy they've been high and and I think there's the, I think there's two aspects to that Moet is one he's played at the wrong time uh, where the he's not in the best positions to be able to hold and flick the second thing is uh, because they both know each other's game so well Samuel's been there and read it like a book to counter it so it hasn't really worked Wow just too much time for that one. <laughs> 11, 10, the ball. Wow. This is a clutch point for Aaron here if he can take the second. That shot selection sh exactly um, explains why Samuel is a rock and so solid. Just showed his experience, held the ball, puts a little triple post, knowing that Aaron's deep on the court um, to tie the game up. Was that a not up? That's it was called up, but I thought, I it, was thought it was down as yeah, well. Yeah, Sammy was now questioning the ball as well. So the ball was called up. Samuel questions it, shakes his head. So I also thought the ball was, it bounced a bit funny. I'm not sure from this angle if we can quite categorically say it was down, but certainly worth questioning. Interesting, you can see what Samuel's done in the second half of this game where he's really straightened up, take the angles away. He's using a lot, lot more height and moving, getting Aaron to stretch up high 
and then take him into the front corners to low. So it just means it's putting a lot of work in Aaron's body and taking him high and then taking him low. And here's a potential opening for Samuel. It's good to see both boys playing through the interference, isn't it? He had to win that point just far too many times. Samuel staying in it. Had so many openings, kept for going for the winners, and then Samuel just keeps hanging in there, hanging in there, hustling and recovering and retrieving, and then forces the error to take a game ball. He's going to ask for a let. Oh. The other thing is that, you know, I have a, I have a belief that if your opponent four. picks up two of your winners, don't go for the third. Well, perhaps that's the, uh, the passive nature of your game, Wade, because if I'm, I'm at the other school that if he's picked up two, I'm going for the third and the fourth. But that's probably the nature of the fact that I'm not as fit as these guys all quick. So I certainly do have to finish the rallies a lot sooner than uh, some of these guys. How do you get the stroke there? <laughs> no, but there is a definite merit in what you just said there, Moet. Uh, you know, you've played two at times. It's good to reset yeah. and uh, re reset the rally again and get build momentum again from there. And play the, you know, and play the averages so that you're not going to... Make that error on the third or fourth occasion. <laughs> I wish we had this wisdom that we have now while we're commentating when we were playing in the younger days to be able to execute some of what we're sharing now. And that's the frustration, right? Trying to do now what we should have been doing then. Absolutely. As their players reset their ourselves again and keep building on the momentum. Now the tempo seems to have picked up a little bit where uh, both players, as we get to the business end of this game. Yes, oh, that's a tough call. I think that was a stroke there, Moet. So do I. I think it was a tough call too. I think he recovered. In time. I think the only was just too, too close to... The only element of doubt is that Sammy was actually going for a drop and it came out sideways as a little boast. Um, but I actually still think Sammy could have played that and it would have, should have been a stroke. If for nothing else, there would have been interference on that. Well, was there an opening for Sammy to take that ball straight down the line? Opportunity. Oh, he makes it. That out. Yep. 14 all. Okay. Wow, this game is really getting longer and longer. Generally, as they get longer and longer, you think the mental toughness would sit with someone like Samuel, with the experience he has, with the results he has. You know, very little to really prove. But, but Aaron's taking this all. game to him. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think Aaron can also take the, a lot of solace from his first game where his shots were paying off. Uh, with that, Samuel plays a little trickle boast at the front as a winner. And 15-14, game ball. 15-14, game ball. He's an opening for Sam. That is a fantastic length. Great straight drive. And we're back to tight game at 15 all. 15 all. These extra points must be putting a lot of work on the body. It almost feels like you've played two games instead of one. Yeah. 
Yep, we could see that coming. As soon as the ball was a little bit loose, that Sammy was going to slot that into the nick. Wasn't quite a nick roller, but uh, got the desired effect. He's just so calm and composed, isn't he? Super experienced, he's a professional, right? So, been on the circuit. If I'm not wrong, he played at Princeton in the US in the Ivy Leagues and improved his games tremendously over those years while he was in the US. Oh, that should be a stroke. Yeah, that's a stroke. Yep, and stroke it is. And that's game 1 all. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an exciting match on our hands with the score now tied up in 1 all. We'll take a short back and break and be right back. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. There's a button. All right, it's a third game about to get underway here. It's been a high-quality game, actually. Uh, I think the standard is definitely higher than the uh, match that these two played a few days ago, where there certainly are, uh, you know, the quality hit of hitting, the shots, movement is even better as well, I think. Um, so overall, a much better game than a match to watch. It is, and the only question mark that I have in my mind is, you know, Aaron's playing such good squash. The only question I have in my mind is, with the relentless pressure that Samuel con consistently puts you under, can he sustain it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, he's certainly fit enough and fast enough. So it's just, well, there's your answer for yeah. the first point. Um, can he sustain it and keep going for his shots and keep believing himself, keep backing himself? Comes up with another lovely drop into the front corner. Takes a brisk lead at two love. get the stroke yeah that's a stroke every day of the week easy stroke takes a little drop a little bit too high and um, the line that Sammy would take would be 
directly to the ball. Well, it's interesting. There is a little bit of shift in body language change in between this, uh, these two players. In the first uh, game and a half where Aaron was a super pumped, bouncing off, where now I think Skung's really got himself into, uh, into the match in a big way and uh, really looked to uh, settle into his work. Just that, if you, I, you know, I think, I think, uh, if you see Aaron isn't doing what he was doing in the first game and a half or so, what, what he's starting to do is he's, he's just hit, you know, he's, he, he's got a lot of pace on his board. You can notice what he was doing is at the right moment, he was taking pace off, giving Samuel a lot more of those jobs to the camera. Yeah, and you can see uh, that even the, the momentum shift with uh, Samuel taking a few more control of these rallies. And another observation in this game three is he's really taking the ball in short, which means Aaron is doing a lot of court sprints from corner to corner. And this is a Samuel that we know, right? Absolutely. Oh, there's that perfect there hold, is, yep. snap, flick, which sends the opponent the wrong way. You know, that's, that's the strategy that we, you know, we were just talking about. It looked down, didn't it? Oh, it was down. I thought the ball was down. 100% down. I also agree with uh, Samuel there. The ball was down. It hit below the red line. It looks good to me. This could be a turning point. The ball was down. Aaron illustrating that he couldn't see what happened because his head was down until the lunge. Yeah, this is this is really good by the referee. I think he's done the right thing by playing a let, and very nice, good of Aaron to say yes. Absolutely. Uh, let's play a let. This is a, this is a correct outcome and uh, good for the game. Well done, Aaron. Because that point could have been crucial in the context of the match, in fact, because it's such a score tight third game. And that one point and, or an error in judgment could really change the, the way the game shapes up. So, well done to the boys. Five, all. I think Aaron is certainly uh, answering some of your questions that can he sustain this intensity and uh, quality that he's playing with. You know, he's hanging in there in this third game at 5 all, And then some. So, well, that's a stroke. A stroke. Beautiful finish with a loose ball that he just puts away into the front right hand corner. Samuel knows it was too short. Oh, those are beautiful balls by Samuel. Great control, taking him corner to corner. Seven. I think Aaron heard what we were saying. <laughs> it's interesting, uh, Samuel's uh, strategy here, right? In the first game, weather the storm. In the second game, make Aaron work. And then the third game is all about taking Aaron to the corners at the front and the back and uh, put more work in his legs. 
and then he gets an easy win put away. Great composure there on Samuel's part. Seven all. And it's seven all. And as we come into the death of the third game, Samuel puts his nose in front. Yeah, it's interesting when Samuel's taking him corner to corner, uh, Aaron's movement, and albeit he's super fast, but his movement is such that he's not getting himself into a position where he can actually do anything with the ball. And that's a function of uh, Samuel's accuracy and the amount of pressure he's putting on Aaron to get to those balls. So I think at best he's able to get to it, but not able to necessarily do anything with the ball. And there we saw multiple examples of that. Yeah, which caused the error now giving Samuel the 9-7 lead. 9-7. We almost knew that was coming, seven, isn't it? Seven, yeah. two games, two, one. So with that, Samuel goes up 2-1. That second game was critical, I think, you know. Uh, turn that result around and really could have gone any, you know, 17 15. Direction. Yep, could have gone either direction. But now Samuel firmly in the driver's seat. And, you know, the type of game he has, he's only going to come out and be as strong as he was in this one, especially toward the end. Yeah, at the end of the game, you could see Aaron talking to himself a little bit about, you know, what he needs to do, what he should do. He looked a little, little bit disappointed there. Uh, he, his game broke down there a little bit in the second half of that uh, third game. But, you know, a lot of positives there for uh, Aaron. I'm very impressed. I mean, I haven't seen him play for a long time. You can t clearly tell his game's improved a lot. And uh, I think a lot of positives for him to take out. You know, the first game and a half were ferocious, and he played some of the best squash I've seen him play. But we always knew that Sammy was going to do what he does best, right? Keep hanging in there and keep breaking your opponent down. So 2-1 Samuel, be right back. So if you've just joined us, it's 2-1 to Samuel about to start the fourth game and it's interesting where it, you know you, you always watch uh, players body language and uh, Samuel's got out of the chair and he's already back up on the court warming up and uh, hitting a few balls where Aaron's now just slowly entering the court so I wonder if the first two games has taken a serious toll on on his body and uh, this will be an interesting game whether he puts up a fight or uh, will Samuel just grind him down you know, I think, you know, Aaron knows how hard it is to beat someone like Samuel. You're losing that second game. 
and then coming to 7 all and then kind of just giving it away from there it has to be playing on his mind it'll be interesting to see how he comes back so Samuel with a change of shirt change of headband I think what you'll see is a few more uh, shots Aaron will go for and uh, if they come off great um, like that shot Aaron does better when he's the aggressor down well he's gonna have to continue to keep that aggression up and uh, keep going for his winners yeah I agree back himself in I completely agree you know for example that drop that he went for was very aggressive and it tipped the top of the game but that's okay and he's got to go for those. Rather die trying than uh, yep. you know, just the game petering out. It's a fantastic pickup. That's well played. That's a great shot. No let. It's interesting, we were talking about Aaron's movements before. On his backhand, his movement into the corner is actually a lot more efficient. Um, and, you know, the last point was a classic example. We were into those drops and played some great defensive lobs. But it was on the actual forehand in the last game where he uh, was moving in there and was a little bit off balance and not quite able to, to hit the ball that we and control it the way he wanted it to. Now some of these rallies are becoming brutal. Oh, this is, that was casual. Yeah, you can tell C. Samuel saying to himself, "Just keep the keep it going, keep the rally going," and eventually he'll break the uh, the rally down and break Aaron down, which is exactly what happened there having to fabricate shots when they're not there. That's what you were talking about, Satyam. You know, the movement down the forehand side. It's just a bit of a stretch. Yeah, look at those lunges Going just down. in that rally. You had to do three, core, three, three big two. lunges. Right intention, but just a little bit straight down the line and down the middle of the court gives Aaron an easy, easy stroke. Both players are using the boats to great effect to try and move each other. Uh, Just open to try up and the open court. up the court yeah. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Down. I tell you what, I am really impressed with Aaron's game. I think he's improved a lot. Yep. To be pushing every game, pushing Samuel uh, all the way. I think uh, he's only going to get better and better, and his confidence is going to grow, grow higher and higher. Yeah, that's a good call there. Uh, just clipped his leg on the way through and Samuel asking for a let. And Aaron acknowledging that uh, there was a bit of interference there which prevented Samuel from getting to the ball. This game's played in 
the best spirit possible or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, really, you know, I think these guys are pretty good friends off the court as well. And they both have a mutual respect for each other and uh, growing respect for Aaron, I'm sure, as well. So here's Samuel doing exactly what he's telling himself. Keep the rallies longer. Keep the rallies going. Taking him short, taking him long. That's a great ball where it dies into that uh, corner there with just a short flick. Actually, I think if I recall uh, listening to Marcus Pua the other day, he was talking about six corners, and that was a classic example of putting the ball into the sixth corner. So you've obviously got your four corners at the front, and the other two corners are pretty much in the middle of the court. But when you play a ball like that, it's dying into that ball where it doesn't come off the side wall. So it's a very effective shot used by all the pros, where they're really maximizing all the real estate that's available to them on the singles court. I think Samuel could have taken that volley into the front for a drop winner or at least working shot. But he elected to keep the rally going. I think he's really doing this to elongate every rally and make sure he's putting more and more work in Aaron. And then he gets an easy error like that, an unforced error. You know, it looks like Samuels has got start, started, right? He's just getting into his workload, and we're uh, towards the, the end of the fourth game. And so five all. And this is really when Aaron needs to be extremely careful. He needs to find a way to stay with Samuel. <laughs> to, uh, you know, absorb this pressure and uh, just keep hanging in there. Here's another opening for Aaron. on Samuel here and uh, Samuel just absorbing it and then uh, lifting the ball up just to keep the rally going and uh, get himself back on the tee and and he gets an opportunity and that should be a stroke oh. that should have been a stroke there as well Mohit he's gone in for a big lunge cannot get up Samuel's got nowhere to get to the ball Sorry to say, Murray, I think that was a stroke. I think Aaron knows it too because he's smiling. <laughs> that should be a yes let. There's quite a bit of interference on the way to the ball there. Absolutely. Aaron did That's try and play it, but he really shouldn't be penalized. He for tried doing to that. go through and play it, and he got bumped off. I think that's uh, a couple of points that are going Seven, against. Uh, well, I guess it's one all now, isn't it? Yep. Maybe he's making up for the previous call. Oh, that's loose. Five. 
9-5 and two points away from this match. Does look like an unassailable lead. And get the stroke. Yeah, it's a correct stroke. You can see all the hard work that Samuel's put in into moving Aaron around in that uh, second and third game. Paying dividends, taking him from corner to corner, having to make, make him do lunges and court sprints. That's, a, That's stroke. a stroke to Aaron as well. Can he fight his way back in? 6-9. Six, 6-10, isn't it? Six ten. Sorry, my apologies. Four match balls. Looks difficult, doesn't it? Winner off the serve, you think? There's a game set and match, ladies and gentlemen. Samuel wins it 3-1. But, but, uh, but, but Samuel's had to work. You can see that from his expression. They've both, they've both clocked a lot of miles. In, yeah, in this one really entertaining, Satya, yeah. super game. Throughout the course of the last two weeks, that's a lot of squash has been played. And uh, Samuel was on his hunches before and Aaron lying on the floor. It's good that Samuel's helped him up because I'm not sure if he's going to end up in cramps as, the, as I believe in after the couple of games uh, that he did. So well done, Samuel. Congratulations. And right. well played, Aaron. Fantastic yep. game. Fantastic game. Great, great, uh, great, great match. Really super entertaining, uh, super pace, great skill. Congratulations to both of them. Satyan, been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Moet. All right. That's a wrap.